Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you all to rise to the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, please call the roll. Present. Here. 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 Okay, tonight is the first night of a public meeting in a long time. We are practicing social distancing, as you can see. Notations to exits are in the front and the rear. Um, because of the limited amount of space that we have, I'm going to ask at this point in time now, we have three items on the public hearing. Bear Hill, commercial shooting ranges, park, and advisory board. Now, I, look at this, Lori. If someone is not here for Barrett Hill and I need room, I will ask someone to voluntarily get up and just step outside until the Barrett Hill is over so we can continue with the public hearing. If not, this would all be for naught and I don't want that to happen. There's still one seat over there, right? There's one there. So we still have room. So we'll start. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing, waive the reading of it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, would the Barrett Hill representative come to the mic? Now, when you come to the mic, we're asking you not to touch the mic. If you touch it and you want to touch it, there's a paper towel there to do it so the next person can use a, a different paper towel. Okay? Yes, sir. Speak to the event, if you would, please. Yes, uh, my name is John. Come, you, can, can, can you hear pretty well? I mean, we can't do too much better. Can I take this off? Yeah, no, no, no. Only because if you sneeze or something. Get a little closer. Sure. My name is uh, John Bainlardi. I'm with Wilder Walter Partners for the applicant Barrett Hill Associates. Um, this is a, um, a public hearing, as you indicated, uh, in connection with um, an extension of a special permit granted by uh, this board in uh, December of 2017 for a 168-unit multifamily workforce housing community in an MFWF uh, uh, floating zone. Um, that um, approval uh, was granted in 2017. In 2019, we requested the extension. Um, subsequent to the uh, grant of the special um, permit, uh, we were sent back to the planning board uh, for, to secure final site plan approval. Uh, we appeared back before the planning board, and the planning board asked us to um, proceed to um, secure our approval from the DEP um, on our SWIP. Uh, that took some time to achieve because the regulations had changed, uh, but we did uh, secure that SWIP approval in August of 2019 and um, at that time uh, returned back to the board and um, the planning board and requested this extension. Uh, when we did appear before your board in the fall, um, an issue which had come to light uh, earlier in 2019 regarding um, water capacity issues with the Mount Ebo water system um, was discussed. And your board determined um, with uh, consultation of your planner uh, that this public hearing should take place. Um, secrets should be opened for the limited purpose of uh, reviewing the water capacity issues. Uh, since the fall, um, we have continued to work with New York American Water, which owns the Mount Ebo water system, which would serve the Barrett Hill uh, project and also uh, serves a number of other existing users. Um, in September, um, we had provided uh, a letter from uh, WSP, which is the hydrogeological consultant for um, Mount Evil Water, um, that confirmed at that time that they had worked through their um, capacity issues um, by going through a redevelopment um, of the existing wells, and that they had achieved capacity uh, necessary to serve uh, the existing users um, with the maximum. Okay, demand. if you just hold up a second. Mr. LaPerch, you have to take a seat. With, there's one right up here with a white tag on it. You can sit there, or one over there. Sorry, sir. Nope. Keep your mask on the entire time, right? Okay, so, go ahead. Sorry. 
no worries. So that that um, that letter is in your in your package. Um, also in your in your package, uh, your submission is uh, a cover letter from um, our uh, planning consultant, uh, which uh, sets forth in, um, the procedure here and includes the um, site plans, which were originally um, the basis of uh, your special permit approval, um, as well as uh, letters from WSP, the one I just mentioned, um, as well as an additional letter dated June 3rd, which confirms that a additional test well has been drilled um, after obtaining the necessary permits and that that test well demonstrates um, a capacity of approximately additional 75 gallons a minute. Um, the letter also confirms the following, um, that uh, New York American Waters Well Redevelopment Program uh, successfully resulted in a restoration of water capacity to serve the existing Mount Ebo users. Uh, meeting the maximum day water demand of 164,000 gallons per day, which equates to 113.9 gallons a minute. And they've uh, done this with the best well out of service and with a resultant surplus of 20.6 gallons per minute, which is available to serve Barrett Hill. Additionally, it confirms that a new well number 12 has been drilled, which produces an additional um, 75 gallons per minute. Uh, the max daily demand for Barrett Hill is 27 gallons per minute. Um, this equates to about 38, almost 39,000 gallons per day. And that is two times the average design demand for um, Barrett Hill. Uh, so, and then finally, it confirms that the combined maximum day demand for the, both the existing Barrett Hill users plus Barrett Hill is 140.9 gallons a minute. That's 113.9 gallons a minute for the existing users, maximum um, actual demand, and the 27 um, gallons per minute for um, Barrett Hill. And that the combined capacity of the Mount uh, Ebo water system with well, the new well, number 12, out of service, that 75 gallon well out of service, is 179.5 gallons a minute, which means that there is an excess capacity of 39.5 gallons a minute, again, with the best well out of service uh, to serve um, the existing users and uh, the Barrett Hill um, project. Now, through no fault of the town, yes. when did this process start with Barrett Hill? How long? Just so the public has an idea, this is not your first appearance before the board. Oh, sure. So um, the, the, the actions before this board, which the board was um, lead agency for under Seeker, was twofold. One was to... Um, okay, but when? Just give me the date. Oh, uh, approximately. Two years? Yeah, yes. So, well, the approval was granted in um, December of 2017. Okay. So we would have been before your board during that. I just want people to let, you know, I mean, we don't really have a lot of questions because we've been through this numerous times. We've had a past public hearing, and it was advised we have another one once the testing was all done, which is the purpose of your appearance. Yes. So basically, two and a half, three years ago, you were in front of the board, and it's just an update, and we're looking to possibly approve a special permit for the next meeting. Okay, we'll take public comment on this subject at this time. Okay, seeing no public comment, because of the circumstances, we're gonna request that we keep the public hearing open for any written comment for 10 days, and it'll be on the next agenda for determination by the town board, which will be the, let's see, what's today, the 9th? 23rd. 23rd, is it? The 23rd. It'd be scheduled to be put on for vote by the town board. Okay. So the motion is to extend the public hearing for 10 days by in writing, and we'll have an appearance at the next meeting. Is Thank there a second? I'll second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I may, may I ask questions? Uh, it's a public hearing, but may okay. I ask questions? I yeah. yeah. Um, actually, is you could have. <laughs> okay. What do you mean I could have? Well, you, you, I asked if there was any questions. Yes, public comment. And, but um, you're public. You're okay. saying you're public. Go ahead. Thank you. Ashley, are we just looking to 
do an extension of the public of the um, of the special permit, or were there other matters involved? Your memos. So the project was going through the process in, back in 2017. They received their special permit approval from the town board. It was referred to the planning board for site plan approval. There was some delay because of some coordination with the EP. And during that time period, the, site, the special permit expired such that the planning board was unable to grant site plan approval because the special permit had expired. Also during that time, back in, in late 2019, uh, as a real result of another application, it was discovered that there was insufficient water to come to support this project. So that's what was just discussed. Um, now that what and, and during that time, uh, they did come back to the town board asking for an extension of the special permit. It was my recommendation that that it be a reapproval of the special permit because it had fully expired without the request for an extension. Um, and then I, I had requested that they do the well testing to determine that they have water capacity. So they satisfied that one concern that I had raised. Um, I do think that the board is now able to move forward to a negative, amending the previously issued negative declaration to resolve this water issue, which is really the only thing that changed during that time, um, and to reconsider an approval, a reapproval of the special permit at the next meeting. Okay. Um. So there are no other issues. I mean, the approval, the initial approval was with another board, uh, another a town board years ago, and it was based on facts that stood back in 2016 and 17. Um, so are, I don't know, I just, I just wondered, they did, their, their special permit did expire. It did expire. Uh, it was still during, it was still actively pursuing their approvals at the time that it there were no other material changes besides the water issue, which has since been resolved. Okay. Um, so there's nothing else that needed to be updated in the statement of use or any of that. They haven't made any other changes to the site plan. Um, <coughs> at this point, they would be seeking site plan of, uh, a special permit from the town board, and then once that's received, they would then go back to the planning board for final site plan approval. Okay. All right. Thanks. So uh, Thank you. Yeah, I just wasn't clear on whether reapproval was something or they, whether they needed to go for a new special permit. And I guess that that no, it's, it's a reapproval of the original special permit. Okay, thanks. Um, and the water testing. Um, and it, um, it's great that you hit hit the uh, jackpot with the well twelve. Um, and there were subsequent tests, test wells in other locations, so you, you're not really depleting the aquifer or other um, residential, use, residential areas in the, uh, in the area? Correct, that, that, that is the requirements of the DEC and the Department of Health that that's uh, fully demonstrated and it'll be a condition of connection into the system. Okay, and that was all presented to them and, and met with them and they approved it? That's okay. in yes. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I just have, a, I just have a, two quick questions for you, and uh, if you could if at least bring the answers for the next meeting. Uh, in reading through this, I found uh, two different numbers for school children, so I was wondering if you could confirm how many children you think will come out of this project. And the second question I had was related to Castle Park. I know as part of this approval, there was uh, the replacement or an agreement for the replacement of Castle Park. Uh, having a young kid, I get questions about that all the time, and, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure how to answer it. Um, so my question is the, the timing of when uh, Castle Park uh, could potentially be replaced, and to uh, what spec? Uh, because I know there was a plan. I don't know that it's included in here, but I'm just curious to know what, what yes. would be going there um, yes. when it is replaced. So a, as a condition of approval, um, there was a, a agreement that was um, uh, it's, a, a pen, it's an appendix to the approval or a condition of the approval that sets forth the recreation requirements for um, this development. Uh, it consists of three things. One was um, a cash payment. Second was the donation of um, approximately... 
uh, as a cash payment of recreation. Uh, the second item is um, the donation of about uh, 40 plus acres, um, which is detailed in the, um, in the agreement. And then the third was uh, to make improvements to the uh, recreation area at the park that you mentioned um, uh, with the value of, of about $100,000. Um, that's all spelled out in that agreement. And those um, items would be satisfied upon the grants of approval of final site plan approval. So um, the expectation would be that if we, uh, um, in the next month, get this resolved and then move on back to the, the planning board, they've been waiting for us. The only item that was really outstanding with the planning board was uh, demonstrating that we had the DEP approval. Uh, but the plan we will have to appear back before the planning board um, for at least one meeting or for them to complete uh, their review and, um, and um, act on final site plan. Okay, the, the, the one thing I, maybe we could look into is, uh, you said up to 100,000, and, and I recall that it was, we had a park, we had a plan to replace Castle Park, it was gonna cost X amount of dollars, and uh, this developer would be able to build it cheaper, and that they were committing to do that at their expense, and it should be around $100,000, but whatever it costs to do, they would complete it if it ran over, it was on them, if it ran under, to their benefit. Yes, and, okay. and, and there are actually details um, that show the equipment and, and provide information about what is gonna happen there. Okay. Uh, but we're, we're committed to, um, to completing that, uh, that obligation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further comment? Okay, again, we're gonna extend the public hearing by writing only for the next 10 days and close this portion of it. So moved originally. Will you sec I second the time? All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Thank you for coming. Thank you. We'll Appreciate give you a few it. seconds to leave. I know some of you are going to leave because I know you don't want to stay for the rest of our meeting. But you're welcome to. <laughs> we like you, but <laughs> I don't want to get this thing off. Okay. I'll let you guys pack up quick before Thank we move you. to Take the care. next one. Thank you. Okay, make a motion to open the second portion of a public hearing, Commercial Soothing Rangers, Chapter 138. Uh, waive the reading of the notice. So moved. I'll Is there a second? All second. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Ashley, would you like to speak to this quickly? Uh, do you wanna go over there to do that? Might hear you a little better? Put your stilt on. There's a mic here, does this work? Uh, no, he, no oh. you know what, just so people don't touch someone else's, let her go toward the mic. And if you need to lower it or have a paper towel there, you can drop it down and put it back up with the same paper towel. <laughs> we'll get your stool. Okay. Um, so the, there is a draft local law before the board and before the public hearing this evening that would um, add a shooting range as a new special permit use in a number of commercial districts within the town. Uh, there are a couple other in inclusions in this local law, uh, including um, special permit criteria that would be specific to both a indoor shooting range and then separately an outdoor shooting range. Um, and then in addition to that, there were some changes that were proposed to the definitions of recreation and as well as re uh, recreation residential. Uh, there was a an earlier version of this document that has a date of February 3rd, 2020 um, that included some deletions that are no longer proposed in the version that's before the board this evening, which is dated at the bottom July 6, 2020. Um, so I know that there had been some public comments that the board received in this last week about those deletions. So those dele deletions are no longer included in the draft that's before the board this evening. And I'll take full responsibility for that when I put it in front of the, uh, in, when I was making up the agenda, so to speak, uh, there's a couple of float laws floating around and I picked up basically the wrong one, but we corrected it the very next day. So what has been on the website now for two days is the accurate one that what was on the first or the, thir the third day prior to that, which is one day, I had put the wrong one on. But basically what we have in front of us this evening, 
And just to let people know too, is uh, back in 2017, there was a comment made by someone which we're gonna read into the record in a moment um, about usually there's a reason for change. Well, back then, the change was not the change. At that point in time, shooting ranges were allowed in the town of Southeast. And I hate to say it, but a boilerplate was used. I know we all read it. We really didn't have an objection to it, but since then, people have made comment, you know, why did this change? And it was changed inadvertently, in all honesty. So we're basically going back to square one with this, and we'll have the public hearing tonight. And I can tell you that we're gonna be, based on the comments we received, I'm prepared to make some change to it. So we'll listen to the public comment, and it will be on the next agenda, which will be again, is what day is that, the 20th? 23rd. 23rd? The 23rd will be on our agenda again for the uh, further work session, and then we will have another public hearing on this matter because there'll be a change to it. Whether substantial or not, we want the public to be made aware. We've also been told we're rushing this. That's, to me, not true. It was first on the town board work session back on uh, Thursday, February 6th of 2020. We subsequently had another one, of course, last meeting. And we don't do any, look, we've been as honest about this and upfront as possible. So to say that, you know, we're rushing this through, that's not quite true. And as far as there's someone in front of this town board or with any kind of a plan for something, it's absolutely not true. So if you think you heard something's going somewhere, I had a gentleman call me just uh, recently, a few minutes ago, who I personally know, he's concerned about Fields Lane. We will be looking at this based on the comments we've heard but we're taking the public hearing tonight and you will have another chance in about a month because next meeting we're gonna further discuss it and probably in a month's time we'll have another public hearing on it, but it'll be advertised accordingly. So with that, um, we'll open the public hearing. Did we do that yet or no? I don't recall. I wanted just to clarify one thing because I know this was a, a comment. Uh, hmm. So just to be clear, under the, the current proposed draft that's dated July 6, 2020, a shooting range would not be considered a recreation use. Recreation is its own separate distinct use. A shooting range would have its own definition, which would be its own use, and it would be only a special permit use in commercial zoning districts. So, um, go ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna ask the public to come up, state your name uh, for the record. Um, also, I have a few that names that, I'll, that send us comments, which I'll, not reading the record. One person has to be read into the record, but they will be a part of the record. Hi, Kathy Croft. Um, what did Ashley, what did you just say, Ashley? I missed that part. Uh, so a shooting range would not be a recreation use. Okay. Recreation uses are things like golf driving ranges and ball, ball fields. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to state that I am in favor of shooting ranges. I'm just not in favor of shooting ranges in um, located, having the potential of being located in, in every single zoning district that we have in Southeast, which is what- We will this, be looking at that. I, I just, yeah, which is what this saw. So what I did was I printed out um, the zoning map and I took every single, because there's nothing in our code right now, in our zoning code, that actually allows a zoning per a special permit for any use in every single district except for the shooting range that's being proposed. So that's that stood out um, to me. And then you know, as you can see, I mean, basically most everything is around roads, Route 22, 684, 84, um, Route 6. So I think that, um, as you said, you're gonna look at it again. A change, so I'm not, I'm not, I, I believe you'll see a, a change. I don't know how big a change, but yeah. every zone will be. And then the other thing is, I think looking at an indoor range would be beneficial. I mean, I know I, I have spoken to the sheriff. I know the sheriff's department needs a shooting range. I understand that completely. But I just think that anybody that has never lived near a shooting range has no idea how irritating that noise can be, and it would be a shame for people um, living in residential areas to have to listen to that continually. So if it could be possibly just located in a building, I think that would be the difference um, in this, in what's being proposed. And that's it, thank you. Would you, would you entrust me with your map with the yellow? You so want I don't it? have to duplicate it? Sure. Just leave it up there with John, and I'll get it back to you. Okay. Thank you. you, don't have to get it back to you. Thank oh, you. good. 
Just leave it there, John. I'll get it later. I'll hold it. Okay. Next person. My name is Marilyn Miller. I'm a resident of Southeast. I'm a firearms instructor, NRA certified, and I'm also a range safety officer. I've received hundreds of phone calls in recent months for new gun owners wanting to learn to shoot, mostly women and families, and they have no place to go and do it safely. Now in Southeast, you can shoot in your backyard if you're 500 feet from a residence. There is no, you don't have to reclaim your lead. You don't have to worry about the noise. Um, there isn't those stringent regulations that ranges have. Um, there's a shortage of public ranges where people can safely learn how to use their firearms um, under supervision. Ranges are very strictly regulated for lead, for noise abatement. Um, and it's just a, a great thing for families to have um, that they can safely shoot instead of their backyards. Um, both new and old gun owners and law enforcement need a public range to become proficient. Um, and they're heavily regulated. So I am all in favor of uh, Southeast allowing ranges again, and I hope you would consider archery and airsoft and, and laser and simulators, all of that also um, for people to use. It brings such an economic benefit to the area. You know, people come and they eat and they, they you know, buy gas. So I hope you will vote in favor of this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Town Board. My name is David Krebs. I'm here for the gun ranges. I come at it from a, a different angle as safety. Um, this year alone, there's been four million people have applied to buy a firearm. Of those 4 million, 44% of them have been first time buyers. Where do they go and learn how to shoot? They don't have any place around here really. And like um, the woman before me had said about now you're allowed to shoot in your backyard with, within the, the rules of the 600 feet and so on, not reclaiming your lead. The range, which I mean indoor would be ultimate because you could shoot no matter what the weather, almost the time. Um, but I look at it as some place for someone who owns a firearm to be able to go and hone his skill because someday he may have to use that skill to save someone else. And, you know, is, are they proficient enough to be able to hit the correct target? Are they going to? They, they'll be taught, you know, they have to learn about what's between them and the target, what's beyond the target, because they have to be responsible for that bullet that they shoot out of that gun, should it ever have to come to such a terrible thing as that. Me, me myself, I'm, I'm handicapped, and I look at it as for safety. I'm <clears throat> too young to die and too, too old to have my ass whooped. So I carry a concealed carry. I, I believe that it would be a uh, economic benefit to the area. People are going to come up here, they're going to eat, like the woman said, buy gasoline. And other things you don't know, what they see, they come back another day, maybe have nothing to do with shooting and come back and do something else in the area. Um, miniature golf at uh, Red Rooster, I, I don't know, you know. But uh, I think that it would be a positive both economically and sa safety-wise for the community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> May I remove the mask or no? No. No? Okay. All right. My name is uh, Ann Finizzi. I'm a resident of the town of Southeast. Uh, I just want to say that uh, my uh, remarks 
are really not about shooting ranges or the, appro the appropriateness of shooting ranges, or so forth. I mean, that, that is a, um, a recreation, quote unquote, uh, use for, for many people. Uh, however, what I'm concerned about is the zoning. There are 10, 10 zoning areas in the whole town of Southeast that are designated commercial and that a um, organization or company or whatever can just come in to these 10 commercial areas. But all of these commercial areas abut residential areas and the um, restrictions that are uh, being placed on outdoor. I wouldn't be so uh, critical if it was just indoor. By the way, we do have presently in Carmel an indoor facility that uh, because of another development being, being proposed for that particular building is now looking for a place to, to, uh, to, to have their shooting range. And it's indoor, not outdoor. And it is located in a residential community, but not, but not outdoor. And so some of the restrictions that you've attempted to put in, I mean, six feet walls, um, there are hours of operation, which are seven days a week from nine o'clock to almost sunset. And then on sa Sunday from 10 o'clock until sunset. Now, anyone who lives near uh, any kind of a uh, hunting area or some, something, really it is more than irritating. And here we will have a shooting range practically located in any area of the town. I wouldn't be, um, you know, so critical if perhaps the, the board would think of a particular location or a particular zone, but to say to anyone, here, you have the entire town, just pick it, and, and it doesn't matter. Even, there is even the neighborhood business zone which is really adjacent to a residential district. And we have an RC and OP3 zone. Well, where is an RC and OP3 zone? Well, on Pugsley Road, where allegedly this uh, sports complex is supposed to be built, and where rumors are circulating that the uh, present um, company that has, uh, that is located in Pal Paladin will probably want to move there. Their first location was John Simpson Road, which is right down the block from me. But uh, maybe that, that, has, that has been reconsidered, would put it that way. Um, and so is the draft in front of you. It will be reconsidered. I beg your pardon? The draft in front of you, based on what we've received, I have some of my colleagues, you are gonna see a change in it. Well, well, uh, well. There has to be there has to be uh, drastic changes. <laughs> also, um, I was part of the comprehensive committee. Now, this was barely four, five years ago. There was no mention of shooting ranges or or anything of that type, outdoor or indoor, for that matter. Okay, and there was a recommendation. And I, I want to read it to you. It's section 7-3. The town should examine its commercially zoned districts with respect to both community character and economic fiscal development. These districts should be evaluated to determine how well they serve the purpose of enhancing community character in the neighborhood business districts the gateways to the communities and along the highways. So here, here, here we have it. There is also another, another section, um, and you may correct me, 
Is there a, in the comprehensive plan, we also recommended that the town prepare a parks and recreation master plan. Is that underway? I mean, before, before we start thinking of adding other uses, and again, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not opposed to, to having it, but I think all of this should be very carefully examined exactly what will be the impact of, of these shooting ranges. I live in Hunter's Glen. When, hunter, when hunting season comes, I know when it comes. And I'm, I, and I'm more than 1,000 feet away or 1,350 feet away. But to have a constant gunfire going off it, 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 it really, really talk about disturbing the peace and quiet of a, com of, of a community. Indoors is another story. Indoors is another story. But outdoors is, is really, you really have to rethink of the impact on residential communities that abut all of these 10, 10, 10 business districts. These are not isolated business districts. They may be isolated from certain portions of the town, but they're certainly not isolated from large portions of the town. Um, let me see, the last, last thing is that um, fences do not prevent noise, <laughs> the noise of constant shooting. They, they, they don't. I have a huge buffer between me and, and, and the area which is being, being hunted. I think you need to look at the impact on the areas surrounding all of these proposed business districts, even by special permit. Special permit, I've never known a special permit to be denied. I, I, <laughs> I've been in various towns for almost 20 years, and I can't remember a special permit being denied. And if you give latitude of 10, 10 business districts for anyone to come in and just following the regulations that you have and some, and some of the restrictions, it, that is not enough. I don't understand why you did not look at maybe a particular area a particular district and, and uh, perhaps designate that. You designate that, you know, for certain business, business uh, operations. There are certain business operations that are in neighborhood businesses that are not in OP3 uh, districts and so forth. So I don't understand why a district was not chosen. Again, I'm not opposed to it, but I am. But I really wish you would reconsider, reconsider, it's, this is really most misguided. And I would be very careful because the um, combination of a shooting range on Pugsley with possibly warehouses, with possibly a sports complex is not, is not a good combination. And that is what I have been hearing, because that facility in Carmel needs to move. They need to move. Thank you. Thank you. You could just get up again, sir, please. Just so we can hear you. Ms. Finizzi brought up about the gun range that's in a residential neighborhood that's inside a building that's in a in Carmel. In Carmel, there's also outdoor ranges, but they're private. That's right. Uh, you know, they're in residential neighborhoods also. Yes. I just wanted to. Thank bring you. That. Yeah. Thank you for adding that. Because, oh, no. <laughs> because I can't tell you how many complaints I have received of people who live off Interlochen and uh, uh, Lake Gilead and Lake uh, Glenida. They hear 
they hear that, that, that noise coming from those, you're right, private, private shooting ranges. And they had asked me, this happened uh, several years ago, and they, they asked me what I could do about it, but it was a private, private organization. And at that time, Carmel, and even now, I don't believe it has a code that would prevent that. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, Alicia Yoruso. Um, I'm an avid gun. I have my permit, so I'm not opposed to the range. I am opposed to the outside range. The noise when it's hunting season, and sometimes when it's not, is astronomical. I'm right there. Um, it wouldn't be fair to the residents that are even adjacent. Uh, as far as when you're talking about, you know, we really have nowhere to go, well, there's Pauling, there's also police facility. I have friends that belong to the other clubs. Yes, you have to drive 10 minutes more, but has society really gotten to be that lazy that they can't just take another step? Or a facility not around the residence. You know, driving here, I'm thinking in my mind, well, what would be a better place? You know, on the other side of Tachico's, there was proposed commercial there that's, that's a big hill, it's unoccupied on the opposite side of the bridge. Or up Independence Way, I know there's <clears throat> businesses up there, I don't know how far, I don't know if there's empty space, but again, that's not residential where the impact of the noise. We're also talking about bringing business in and, and more, you know, what about the traffic on 312? We've already addressed it for the warehouses. Well now bringing in more traffic, where does that put that traffic? Um, and you had mentioned uh, that you received a call. I also understand it's also a done deal. They're moving. When I was in there talking to them about it, who? When you say to, when I was to in whom? the facility, the young, the, the I guess uh, wife or girlfriend. Um, when I was talking to her, because they were also talking about how they have private courses, she was telling, "Oh no, it's pretty much done. This is where we're moving." Who's, who you're saying, who, can you identify, not the, the person who said Route it. The 6, the, the, what's that, Palmadia? Uh, Paladin? Forgot, right. That's the one that's moving in there, isn't it? Because I, I. There, there is nobody that has approached this town, nobody okay. has approached this town about anything. I'm telling you a direct conversation I had with them when I was asked, and they said, no, it's pretty much a done deal. And then, uh, you know, I don't know anybody's marriage arrangement, husband, boyfriend, whatever, came over and says, shh, 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 wait. I will also tell you what prompted me to go in there was a conversation that a good friend of mine had, and I said, what are you talking about? And that's why I went in there to find out. So I know you're saying no, but I'm told no, it was I'm saying done. no one has made an application to this town, okay. officially, okay? No planning board, no work session, nothing. <clears throat> Could it okay. happen? I've been here, I was on the county legislature for 19 years. Okay, I'm just telling and you what I was told. And was mentioned, uh, Ms. Finese mentioned there was a piece that would come off of Simpson Road, part of Tilly Foster Farm. It was going to be a 100 acre veteran cemetery. Mm -hmm. And then it was going to be the area where Paladin may or may not go there. The mm -hmm. rumors have been around for well over a decade. Mm -hmm. So it may happen, it may not, but there's nothing in front of this town, zero. I'm just telling what I was told. And also, you know more than we do because whoever that is is telling you, mm -hmm. they haven't told us. And it may go there. Okay. I'm not saying it is or it isn't, but we don't know. Okay. Um, also, uh, there's a number of animals of special concern back there, not just for that area, but also the sports complex. I don't know if anybody's addressed that. I know that um, there's some work been going on, but I guess that's for the nest section. Right now, again, I'm not opposed to having a gun range. I'm opposed to having noise impact. I'm opposed to the additional traffic that may occur on that road. Um, uh, that's where I lie, and I would want to limit it to just the range, not all these other things that are being proposed, outdoor go-karts and whatever else. It's a noise. It's a resident. Go-karts like go -karts are gone. It was an error when it was put in. Okay. Okay. Fair or enough. Are stricken, I should. Anyway, come in two weeks' time, you'll see another notice posted. It's much of what's being discussed tonight, I don't know how much is by zones but you'll see it not drastically changed, but changed. We are listening. It seems like a lot of things being thrown over there and you know, you examine one traffic and then you know, there's more being put on. Is there gonna be 
a revision of a review of the traffic of what's proposed at this point in time that's all Not basically at this point. The, ta the town tonight i've got it on the agenda about route 22 we're going to look into route 22 first and route 312 if we approve 22 the next one we're going to look at is route 312. Okay. we didn't look at it a couple of years ago because it was a big project at the time crossroads at the time we couldn't make a change then since the meantime we're going 22 first and then the 312 so it will be looked at but again if a person owns land they're going to want to build on the quarter zoning right okay too bad you guys all got masks on i don't recognize everybody sorry <laughs> hi good evening my name is felix carcano and i am the founder of the paladin center Oh, really? So I Great. thought I'd step up and address a few things. Uh, as far as rumors go and things that our staff say, um, yes, three years ago, we were talking in the county executive's office, three years ago, before the distillery, we were talking about John Simpson, we were talking about Pugsley. I can honestly to tell you- the county executive, though. The, what's that? You're saying the county executive. County executive, some county legislators. Anyone from, a lot of anyone, time from, anyone from the town of Southeast? No. Okay, no. thank you. Just so you know, folks. And, and we didn't bother because it's gone nowhere in three years. And yes, the distillery may come in. I'm not going to speak to anything else with that with regards to the coronavirus and things going on. We will be staying in that building for a long time. And also, maybe what you heard in the store was some misdirection because we've actually made plans to leave. Right, right. Because we're planning to move, we actually have an option now to leave Putnam County. And just because of the coronavirus. Just, sir, could, if you would just so speak sorry. to Mike so everyone can sure. hear you. Sure. Um, just because of the coronavirus, our plans to leave Putnam had to been put on hold. So we have another facility that we're going forward with. So I just want to come here to speak about a few things because I have expert knowledge, having eight years of military, police, civilian training to talk about safety and noise. I'll start by saying that every one of my residential neighbors on Seminole Hill Road has my personal cell phone number. In eight years, we've only ever had one sound complaint, and that was caused by a helicopter that scared someone's dog, and I apologize to the owner and the dog. We have done explosive breaching on a regular basis on the property. We do flashbang training with SWAT teams on a regular basis. We know how to contain sound. And I will tell you this, that if you do have someone that wants to try to do an outdoor range, the reason why an outdoor range is needed in addition to an indoor range, especially for law enforcement training, is a function of distance. Most civilians shoot from three yards to maybe 25 yards. Most law enforcement have to train from 25 to 100 yards. Having spent the money and built the only indoor shooting range in Putnam County, I can tell you the expense that goes into a shooting range is the HEPA quality air, air handling system. Our air system for our very, very small range was on the order of a quarter of a million dollars. It is financially impossible to do that for a 100-yard range. But I will also tell you, and I'll provide documentation during the week, technology in the last three years has come light speed with regards to sound abatement. The old days, no offense to the club, but the old days of standing in the woods and shooting into the ground are so not acceptable for so many reasons, for environmental, for safety, and for the fact that, believe it or not, trees actually amplify gun sounds. Uh, I can give you page booklets of documentation. Um, outdoor ranges nowadays are surrounded with, it's a material that, like for example, the concrete barriers you see on the highway, it's a version of that, where it provides ballistic protection, called blue sky protection. It provides sound deadening. Um, there are roof systems. You've all seen the big clear span buildings that go up everywhere. You put a clear span roof up, that holds all the sound inside of it. The only thing you don't do is you don't attach the walls to the roof. You need to have an air gap so that air can flow through so you don't have to have the ventilation system. Uh, sound for every, for every time sound the distance of sound doubles, it drops six decibels. The loudest gun out there right now is 173 decibels at the barrel, which is like a jet engine. At 1,000 feet, that drops down to 110 decibels, which is between a chainsaw and a lawnmower. 
with proper mitigation, sound mitigation, you can get that sound level down below around the area of 85 decibels, which is the sound of Route 84 going by with traffic. So with proper study, with proper requirements, sound can be handled. There are police departments all around the United States that were being sued and fined by their own neighborhoods because of sound violations. And there's a few companies out there that have made a lot of money fixing that problem. So it is fixable. It is addressable. It's provable. It's documented. It can be documented. So just to say, um, we're going to be around in Carmel for a little while. And I can't say the other location. Uh, it's going to be a problem for some, some residents that don't have permits in other places. But um, we're going to still help. And we'll help advise. Uh, we can put you in contact with all kinds of experts to guide you, if you like. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming because we've no. been accused for many, many months by so many people in this no. room that we're hiding stuff, doing it, and you no. proved this evening. To be honest time. with you, we gave up. We truly, honestly just gave up. I hate to say so. that's great, but it's good news for a lot of people in the audience. Yeah, yeah. And so. we're sorry you're going through it, but again, yeah. you kind of got us off the hook because what they were saying about us, what we've been doing all this time is a lie, and no. I hate it. absolutely not. Absolutely not. Thank you for coming. Thank you. That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> I'm Carla Lucchino. I'm a town of Southeast resident. And uh, I just want to uh, cast my vote in favor of the proposed changes to chapter 138. Uh, I'm working off the February version, so I have a little bit of the wrong uh, things. But three primary reasons I'm in favor of it. First is the training. I'm just reinforcing what you've already heard. Uh, for firearm owners, particularly a lot of new firearm owners, training is essential for safety reasons. Everybody knows that. Everybody would acknowledge that. Um, and being close to home is better. Uh, I know someone said, is it really too much trouble to drive 10 more minutes? Sometimes it is. Um, I think if uh, we have the ability to train closer to home, people will train more frequently, and that's good because it will drive improved safety. Um, and uh, so safety was the second reason, and the third reason is an economic reason. I think it's very, very important uh, that we try to attract more businesses to the town of Southeast in Putnam County because the revenue, the tax revenue generated from those businesses offsets the extraordinarily high property and school taxes we have because they make contributions. So the burden isn't only on the homeowner, it's shared with the business. I think that's a huge positive for us, particularly in, in light of what we've been through for the last few months and are continuing with reduced tax revenue. So um, I look forward to the revision uh, and uh, the changes. I think uh, I agree with what Felix said about noise abatement and ways to solve some of those problems. And I also agree about zoning concerns. We should do this smartly. But I think it's a huge plus for the town. And I hope you approve it. Thank you. Next person, please. Town Board. Now, before we wrap that part up, I do want to read into the record one and the other ones that made comment. And anyway, even though they made the comment prior to this evening, I told them we would enter it into our record this evening. And like I said, in a couple of weeks, we'll have a new version. Uh, we have a Janet Keys. Uh, she lives in Brewster, New York. Uh, Barbara Harrison in Brewster, New York. I am not good at uh, foreign languages, sorry. <laughs> M-A-J-O-S-I-G-E-R, J-O-S-I-G-E-R. Bill uh, Josinger, I think. Josinger? It's Bill Josinger. OK. Uh, he lives in Brewster, New York. Ms. Evers, you're here this evening. We we're entering yours. Do you want to say anything publicly, or we we're entering this into record on your behalf? Is that, do you want to speak to it, or is this good enough when we put it into the record? I don't have it specified. I can't, I, sorry, I can't hear what she's saying. She I, said that's enough. That's enough. This is enough. You're good with this. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Margie Vasquez, Brewster, New York. Lynn Eckhart asked to have it read into the record. And Jamie Grossman, Jamie Williams Grossman in Brewster, New York. 
and Eileen McDermott in Brewster, New York. Ms. Eckhart asked this to be read in the record and unfortunately things have changed. She did not see the change. Like I said, I wanted to put it on. I had two versions. I put the wrong one on day one. Second day was revised and it's been out there two days. And by the time I got this, I called her and made her aware of it, but it was already written, so we'll read into the record accordingly. I'm quite sure it will change the next time we speak. <clears throat> Dear Supervisor Hay and members of the board, I hope that everyone is well. I write to you today to express my concern regarding the proposed zoning code change on shooting ranges. Would ask that this letter be read into the record tonight. Usually when a town code is revised or completely changed, there's a reason for this change. And since this specific use of shooting range was banned as enacted by the town board less than four years ago, April 6, 2017, I would have to assume that there is an important reason for this significant change to our zoning code. A clear explanation for this change is an important component of this legislation. For example, is a shooting range proposed for Southeast? We can answer that now even from the direct words of one person, no. And there have been, and right now there's nothing on our table. There have been rumors of this for years, and that gentleman identified it. Yes, it has been for years. Even if the plans are tentative, it would be helpful for residents to know about any possible shooting ranges that might be planned for Southeast and what locations are proposed. Again, there is none. Now, they mentioned one of our councilmen, and uh, I'll read it, it's there, but I'll defend them. If Councilman O'Connor proposed these changes, perhaps he can shed some light on any county plans. We were told tonight, the county may have plans. When Mr. O'Connor goes to work every day, he goes to work as an county employee. He has a job like any of us. When he gets here, he represents the people of the town of Southeast. Whether he knew of it or not, he had to have maybe a confidential uh, clause in his contract me with the town and we have a town with the county but when people sit here we've had other people that work for the county I work for the county for 19 years okay my allegiance is here I believe when he's here his allegiance is here when he works it's with the county can he wear two hats he does but he doesn't have any more knowledge I don't believe and if he does he puts it on the record we have been hiding absolutely nothing and that's why I have to thank that gentleman tonight you cleared it up we are not guilty as charged in addition, these should be concerns that much of what was written into the 2000 code has now been removed and has been crossed out. And this is the section which I take responsibility for because I put the wrong version on. I'll read it, but it's not true. Specifically under section two, recreation. Recreation uses shall exclude automotive or go-kart tracks, shooting ranges, amusement parks, and any use of archery equipment, guns, weaponry, or similar equipment that would simulate combat, <clears throat> excuse me, including equipment that has the capacity to project a projectile or limit, emit a light or a laser. After board discussion and unanimous vote in 2017, this includes votes by two current board members, Supervisor Hay and Councilman Alvarez, it makes no sense to completely eliminate this portion of the code, especially in light of the problems the town has encountered in regard to motorized vehicles, motorized vehicle tracks within Southeast. As you know, there are at least three locations where off-road vehicular use has been problematic. Without those protections, the future applicants might believe that these uses are welcome in addition to any southeast location. These exclusions should be addressed now and incorporated in any code change. There are many ways to improve the proposed changes on shooting ranges. One would be to allow only indoor ranges. Southeast is a suburban town where residents work hard to enjoy peace and quiet. Neighborhoods should be not subject to gunfire noise because rep repetitive noise that falls below the accepted decibel level is still disturbing. Another positive change would be to scale back the number of zones where shooting ranges would be allowable. If outdoor ranges are to remain, the town board should study maps and limit these ranges to areas where noise and safety will not be a factor. Outdoor ranges should, could be limited to these specific areas. Finally, the time of this code change is unfortunate and unfair. If there are no shooting range proposals in the works or even in discussion, then there's no reason to rush this code change through the process. There are still many residents who are reluctant to attend gatherings and all residents should be able to attend public hearings without fearing for their health. At the very least, the public hearing should be held tonight, but not extended to a later date so interested parties on either side of the debate feel comfortable enough to attend to speak. Again, I've been here now eight and a half years. And when I got here, the first thing I changed was after a public hearing, there's no way to vote on it. Because I got the shaft 
by the town many years ago. I had a proposal in front of the town, went to a public hearing, it was the first one I ever attended as a, a citizen, a dumb citizen, I hate to say. <laughs> and I went to a meeting and was, people spoke like they spoke here this evening. As soon as everyone was done speaking, they closed the public hearing and they read a resolution. They didn't listen to a word we said. We have never done that, not since I've been here. We listen and even before this happened this evening, some of my fellow councilmen, no councilwoman anymore, all councilmen, contacted me. They were looking to make some changes which we identified prior to. So I'm not saying I've been in the business too long. I work really, really hard. And when I hear things like that, I find it very troubling. So this- Whose comments did you read? Lynn Eckhart's. I read that, didn't I read that in the record when I started? I wasn't sure. You mentioned several names. Okay, no, I, I mentioned, I, okay. Anyway, it was Lynn Eckhart. And again, what I put on the internet, one thing, and it, it changed, and I take full responsibility. If you saw my desk, you'd understand how it happened. Go to see Mr. Stevens' desk, it'd be a lot worse. Okay, but mine's bad, but his is worse. <laughs> okay, so with that, we put in the record, I'm gonna tell you now, uh, in two, two weeks at the, at the minimum, and maybe a maximum, we have started working on some changes, uh, the definition of clarification, zones, and uh, we're gonna come back with something. We listened long before what you said here this evening, what she said, many of you have already said, you didn't see her letter. So we all kind of think a lot. Just let me finish, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, now you interrupted my thought. Go ahead. Get up here and speak yeah, then. I just wanted to ask uh, whether or not um, the letters will be posted on the website or do I they, have they, to If you, uh, we'll, we'll post them on the website. I uh, we'll, we'll, I'll put them on there tomorrow. We're going to We're going to repost the whole agenda tomorrow and I'll put the letters at the back of it. Yeah, because we have letters coming in, so I appreciate those. These will go in the file, okay? And again, whatever comes in the next 10 days will be similar. So, any further comment? Seeing none, I'm gonna make a motion to close this portion of public hearing, leave open 10 days for more public comment, but kind of wait until the next round, folks. You can say what you wanna say, but there's gonna be some change. So with that, I'll, entertain, I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All that came for that this evening, thank you for coming for that portion. We have another public hearing now. I'll let people clear out kind of and we'll go to the next one when you're done. We'll just take a 30 second recess, guys. That's bad. Public hearings. What did you say? What did you, you want a copy of the agenda? Yeah. You know what? I'll get, uh, I'll can someone mine. give? I give can give mine. you. I'll give you mine. Oh. You know what? I won't ba blame you. I'll take full responsibility. I did it. I didn't print that for copies of the agenda. You good? We'll read it before we do it anyway. You're welcome. You. you can hold you on can to keep it. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Be posted tomorrow. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. Parks and Rec Advisory Board make a motion to open that public hearing and weigh the reading of the notice. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let me get myself situated here. I got so much stuff here. Okay, um, at our meeting previously, I had told you that the recreation advisory history goes back to like 1988. Uh, way back when, uh, the town didn't have much of anything. A lot has taken place since then. But this board has always been at odds with whoever was in charge of it. 
So we had 92 to 93, we had 94, 95, uh, nothing in 95, 96, 97, 98. Bottom line is around 2007 there we, was the last time we appointed someone to the advisory board and there were seven members at the time. And the only thing that happened uh, since then, I got here in 2008. Hmm. I think I got here in 2008. Yep. No, I got here in 2000. I can't remember what year I got here now. I've been here for so long. <laughs> I got here at 11. So the bottom line, the last thing the town did was they put in Wells Park, they put a spray park. It was like over $500,000. And I came in the following year, which was 2012, because that happened in 2011, they opened the park. So my first budget that I had handed to me had a deficit of $150,000 by opening the spray park. Now, the world, the public demanded that the town have a spray park, and they put it in. Well, by the second year, I was only losing $46,000, and I closed it. And the reason I closed it? For that summer, we had five people attend that park on a daily basis. The first year, when we lost 150, we had a, a stronger requirement because they had nurses present and whatever. It was never going to make money. The, way, the cost to run it was phenomenal. I'm telling you right now, if they had built a pool back in 2007 and 8, when they, when they did this in 2011, I'm going to tell you right now that pool would still be there. It was at Wells Park, and it would be used by the public. They could have made a small little spray thing outside of it, and it would have been a very big success. But when five kids a day, I made a joke of it, which I didn't mean to joke, but there was a place up in uh, Fishkill, some kind of a splash down. I could hire a limo and send those five kids up there every day and have been better than what we provided. In the meantime, we've given it to the, to the village as a lease for the next 25 years. They don't use it as a spray park because it's, it's like, I hate to say it, you know, you could have put down there with those little whirly things you see in the water your lawn and the ones that go back and forth like this here. If you put that down there, those kids would have had a ball. Nope, we had a pine tree, we had palm trees, we had uh, whatever, and the water trickled down from it, nobody attended. So as far as the board, um, I'm, the recommendation to come back is to dissolve the board, take it off the books, because it's been on the books all these years, and it has been enforced, and we're going to take it off because it's not used. So that resolution will come forward the next time. Is there any uh, comment? I wasn't even aware that we had a board, and then when you proposed dissolving it, um, and I read the law or, or the chapter that defines what they do and, and, and the goals. I, I thought, you know, that's, that's a really good idea. Why don't we have a board? I we mean, do. I, I know that you We, we do. And, and, and it was unattended, and it just died. Okay. Do you think we might want to restart it? I would not. No way. No. You know, sometimes the town board has to take responsibility for the things on their own. And I think that's our job. We don't need a board. If something's forward, you hear it tonight, we have a proposal that's been out there now three or four years about uh, Tenet Lake, the park was supposed to be done. I know we get beat up constantly, but we have an agreement with some to do something and it's holding up that particular park. We don't have a lot of land. Way back when, for some strange reason, the town really didn't consider sports. When I got here in 1957, we played down the electric zone field. It was the only field they, they had. Then they used Markell. Markell had a house up on, I guess they call it Tenetta Lake Road. I think it's what became a group home and now it's a really big house. They had a nice field. When you're a little kid, any field is nice. It's it had Margolis. grass. That was Margolis. Margolis. Oh, Margolis? Not yeah, Markell? That was, that oh, okay. was the field. Margolis. <laughs> Yeah. And that was a field that we would go to, and it was a lot of fun to play on. And yeah, strawberry patch there. <laughs> you must be eating the strawberry. But the bottom line is, we, we can do it. We, pardon? I said, I hope we're not going to go through every year. <laughs> so at this point in time, no. Take it off the books. If we need to re reinforce at some point, but I'm telling you now, the town doesn't have the money. There's not a lot of areas we can do things, and we are doing things. We have, you know, a lot of things are really beginning to happen. 
the highway department is really making huge improvements. Um, we're making improvements. So as far as that board, the recommendation will be through a resolution, which I'll put forward to the next meeting, dissolve it, get it off the books and continue to move forward. That's what we're here for. So I'll do that for the next meeting. This is a public hearing, so you're yep. public Yeah, yes. can we, does anybody want to speak to it, please? Sorry. No problem. I forgot where I was in the agenda. We should have been done by now. <clears throat> Sit closer next time. I don't have to work so far. I know, I will. I wasn't planning on speaking on this, Kathy Croft, but I think, I think you're missing a few things. First of all, in 2007, it was reinstated because there was a proposal that was looked at for, and it was actually on, it was a referendum on the ballot to build a rec center. I think it was for $17 million, which would have included an indoor pool, and they were gonna build it up yep. at the 10 acres there off of Independence Way. Um, and it died. And it died. It was voted down that evening. Um, but that's all that that, when that was resurrected, that's all that they were tasked with. No yep. one ever said task yep. them with looking, as far as I know, with looking at other opportunities. <clears throat> but having said that, I, I mean, I've lived in this town for over 20 years. I did not bring up my son in this town. And the town where we lived prior, there was, you know, there was a swimming pool for the community. There were a lot of different things for children. And, you know, I think Castle Park, it's in deplorable condition right now. Can we just now. explain why this evening? Sorry? Will you explain why that's happening this Right, week? right, I know. But I, but I still see that years away from being fixed. That's and not that, true. That one, if okay, this, I, I'm glad I want to be that, proved If that comes, if, be, what, if this passes the next meeting. I want to be proved wrong, Tony. I absolutely okay. do. Um, I'm help you but that was wrong. a public-private <laughs> partnership. I think that was basically private that actually got that built to begin with 20 years ago. Yes. So, um, I do think there is a lot of room for improvement with recreation in our town because I think, you know, as a as a bedroom community in New York City, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of families here with children, and there's n there we could do better. Yes, we and can. And when that and when that spray park was built, and I have every single bill, I know exactly how much that cost because I was appalled by that money being spent on such a, such a, you know, the population that that was going to be attractive to was, a t you know, like, what was it, maybe a three-year range, maybe three-year-olds to five-year-olds or whatever. It wasn't, you know, the greater good of the community, but yet it took all that money that um, the campus at Fields Corner and, you know, all our recreation funds went towards that. So um, the Recreation Advisory Board had nothing to do with that. That was a town board decision. Well, but they, they, at, at that point in time, they were no longer even involved with it. Once that project failed for the $17 right. million, so maybe, it dissolved. Maybe if there is a Recreation Department or Advisory Board, maybe their mission statement has to be, you know, instead of, instead of having the new members come to, you know, to find, to, to, to work on getting a, a building done like they were doing, maybe it's just because the mission statement was never clear. This board can do stated. the very job. We're a town board, yeah. something can come in front of us and we can get it done. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to clear up a few things because well, it seemed I mean, like there were some missing links there. Well, the missing links is nothing was happening and once that one project died, that was the end of it. Right. And it was like an all or nothing. Right, but I just don't think this town has ever offered what it, the potential that it could offer to families that have children. Well, and I'm only saying that because where I grew up, and I grew up in the 50s, you know, we had a community pool. And a few weeks ago, I was contacted by a reporter from the Journal News, and he said, hey, are there any community pools in Putnam County? And I said, I don't think so. And I was proved wrong because there's the little one that they bought the camp over there in Putnam Valley. But our whole, our whole county, there's not one. <laughs> Hey, you know how many pools this county probably has privately as opposed to community? Right. Big time. Right. And that's another problem too. Yeah. And, and then we provide a lake. Can, yep. we, can improvements be made? Yes, they can. One, it's all about money. When they did that spray park, they drained the entire oh, I, fund. I, and until we get the check 
for this project if and when it goes through, plus the improvements to the park, that will be the first time any kind of money has come in in, in probably a decade. Yeah. And you know, you can't do things without money. People can take, you know, we don't provide, we have a lot of programs. Everyone says this town has no programs. I'm telling you right now, you go on the webpage, you call our recreation department, they will tell you we do a lot of things down there and people don't know. Well, maybe it's all about marketing because I remember going to that spray park, I think the year after it was built and I, you know, and there was no one there. No, I know. So, I just and told I just you it was don't five. Think, and I don't think anybody knew about it. So maybe it's all well, about marketing. I know how they didn't know about it. They were paying for it, but whatever. It's gone, it, it, it's there, but I don't think anybody's yeah. gonna use it. It's, it's cost prohibitive to yeah, run it. Of course it is. If the same, again, I said earlier, if that money had been spent on a pool, it'd be thriving right now, thriving. Yes, it would. But we don't have the money to replace it. Mm -hmm. And someday maybe the philanthropist will come by, drop some money in the town's uh, coffers, and we can do something. Mm -hmm. And our biggest problem here in the town is we got too many parks. We got all these mini parks, okay? Scalpino's a nice park. We got, um, uh, not Wells, uh, Markel, Volunteer. We, there's nothing in Electro, but we got three fields. Every time we do something, we got to do things in threes. Mm -hmm. And it, up at, when you go up to the regular park up by the beach, and if that gets replaced, that, but then they'll say, well, what about us on this side of town? So most towns don't have three parks. So if we, if we had one big, large parcel, but back when they, they didn't think of it, I don't know how, and how do you play catch up after all these years? One, we have no money, the, the land is limited, it's very difficult. But if someone's got a proposal, well, listen. I mean, I, I, look, at, there's a lot of things people want, and they did something that the people wanted, and it was a big disaster. Yeah, well, I, I don't think the people wanted it, number one, but that's besides the point. Well, but um, but I do hope that Castle Park does get it's going to get done quickly. It will, well, I'm not going to say quickly. The last time I was there, it was like Splinter City, so we yeah. should yeah. probably we, we could look at the Castle Park thing. I brought it up tonight, but um, maybe there should be a deadline on that that yeah. we could look at. Well, unfortunately, when we when we made this agreement back when, it was one that got their approval. They will not be getting their approval until possibly two weeks, and then it has to go back, I think, to the planning board. So it's maybe a month or two months. So maybe next year at this time, that will be a thriving metropolis again. But right now, that park should have been closed long ago. Where it shouldn't be open because the state no longer has allowed that type of facility to exist. It's got to be stainless steel, this, this, and this. The Splinter Park, like I say, should not be used, and I believe it's, it, it's not being used. It can't be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. On the spray park, I think that the uh, rec department wanted that so that they could use it for their day camp. So I think that's one of the reasons why they put in that spray park. Okay, well, they lost a lot of money. We never no, but it, it wasn't just for five people. It was for... No, 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 no. It was, it was meant for everybody. And when it was done being built, whoever wanted it, whatever use they proposed for it, when I had to close it down, five kids a day was the average. We have the attendance records for that summer, oh. five kids a day, and I said, that's it. We can't continue to eat that kind of money. Yes, sir. Hi, Anthony Colello. I'm also a Southeast resident. I just want to applaud you on the transparency of the way you do business. You've done it like this for a long time and it works. Also shrinking and getting rid of duplication is great. There is no reason we need a parks planning board when we have your board. You guys could do the job just fine. Thank I think you. we can, thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing as it is today, 10 days for written comment. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, let me get my glasses back on and now we're going to do a lot more work. Okay, I make a motion to go into the work session about peddling and solicit Article 1, Chapter 103. Will, I didn't get anything for that. Did you write anything up yet? Yeah, well, actually, it's 99% done. I thought that it should have been, but I obviously did not. Um, Next agenda. Working from, uh, from the uh, town of Goshen, um, which has got a federal uh, soliciting law that has passed constitutional muster, and uh, I'll be you know, putting that into the okay. by form. So I'll, put, can, I'll put, uh, on, put, put it on next agenda. Put it on so we can send a public hearing for next you want, you, well, you want us to have this, but you want us, we're going to discuss it at our next meeting, yeah, and then we'll put, it at the next and then the first meeting in August is the public hearing? Correct. Good. 
I'd rather do the second meeting only in case we don't have enough items from the first one. So the second meeting in August, we'll set a public hearing for that law, okay? okay. Just in case. We don't, sometimes during the summertime, we don't get a lot of things. We're playing catch up big time tonight and uh, we're not gonna have as much to do in the future with it. Okay, we will do that. Okay, second part of the work session, funding Route 22 master plan and zoning update. Um, I had forwarded you earlier in the <clears throat> week or whatever, Ashley Lai, who was here tonight representing AKRF, had put forward a proposal. And I would like to make a, well, I plan to make a motion at the end of the meeting to uh, authorize the town supervisor to negotiate funding a Route 22 master plan zoning update with the town planner at a price not to exceed 19.5. I have not had a chance to negotiate with her yet. Uh, she didn't know she was going to be negotiating, but now she does. So um, I just want to let you know that uh, I want to get your feeling of it, and if you we can waive the rules and put it on the actual agenda and vote on it, and we'll be up to up to 19.5. So don't look for a full check. <laughs> Any comment on anyone? Now, like I said earlier this evening, in case you forgot, we're gonna be working on Route 22 first. Uh, we have a few uh, areas that we have to look at, and then we're gonna head out to Route 312. So, good enough? Okay. I'm sorry, what were you saying about 19.5? The proposal when it was forwarded to us, it said it was cost me 19.5. Okay. I'm asking that be the maximum, and I'm gonna try to negotiate a little better price. Okay. And not a dollar. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Make a motion now to go into the regular portion of the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 First item, resolution set erosion control bond, state line realty restaurant depot. Now therefore it be resolved that the bond amount is hereby established for the project set forth below. Project name, state line restaurant depot. Commercial site plan, site improvements, 1,686,000. Erosion and sediment control, 66,200 and be further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution shall be transmitted by the town clerk to the applicant planning board secretary and building inspector forthwith so move for discussion second discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. number two resolution arb recommendation recommendation eurotech construction now therefore be resolved that the town board hereby accepts and approves a report of the architectural review board dated June 30, 2020, in connection with the application Eurotech construction, which seeks amended site plan approval for an existing commercial slash recreation facility located at 1639 Route 22, tax map ID 46.3-13, to be used as a general business use of, including making improvements to an existing gravel access way and restoration of an existing soccer field to a lawn, a copy of the ARB review and report is annexed here to and made part hereof, and that such report shall be incorporated in any final site plan subsequently reviewed and approved by the planning board. So move for discussion. I'll second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number three, resolution ARB recommendation Northwood Tree Care. And by the way, going back to that last one, there's a lot of recreation being brought in privately. We have pro swing being proposed out there. These are things the town of Southeast cannot afford to do. We don't own the land. We can't afford to buy the land where it may be, but there's a lot of businesses coming into this town. Now, when we, we charge, they charge, but there's a lot of recreation being brought in this town by outside private agencies, and they do work with the town allowing different programs. So when I hear we don't have recreation, we're not doing enough, I think we do a lot and we have to thank those outside that are helping contribute toward that, just for the record. Okay, Northwood Tree Care. Now therefore it be resolved that the town boy hereby accepts and approves a report of the architectural review board dated June 30, 2020, in connection with the application of Northwood Tree Care, which seeks amended site plan approval for an expansion of existing wood processing business and a soil processing business located at 25 Fields Lane, tax map ID, 78.2-73, a copy of the ARB review and report is annexed here too and a part hereof, and that such report shall be incorporated in any final site plan subsequently reviewed and approved for the project by the planning board. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Number four, resolution authorized additional expenditures to purchase highway equipment, skid steer loader with blacktop planer attachment. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Town of Southeast Highway Superintendent is authorized to expend an amount not to exceed $80,000 for the purchase of an all wheel ski steer loader. And it's further resolved that the Southeast Superintendent of Highways requires any additional funds amount above the allotted. He will be further authorized by the Town Board to make such expenditure and be further resolved that this resolution shall take effect immediately. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. Let me briefly say, um, in the past, over the past six years, there's been very, very little equipment purchased by the Town of Southeast. There was uh, no plan of how expenditures would go in the future, what roads would be done, and I have to compliment the High Highway Superintendent Mike Burdick. He would be coming to you during the budget process, identifying how <coughs> and what he's looking for in his budget. Fortunately for us, uh, we have funds in the line, quite a bit of funds, because we haven't done much in the past six years, and we're kind of playing catch up with the equipment, and we're going to have uh, we're going to have a change that soon. Mike, we don't really take comment. You're, right. Okay. Um, unless no, I wouldn't mind hearing him speak. Anyone have an objection to that? No, I'd okay. like to hear him speak. Go ahead. Well, I just want to give you I just want to give you a quick update on the highway department. Um, you know, the the Corona thing was way more trying than a tough winter. Um, my guys really they really I really have to compliment the guys. They worked through this thing like a champ. We were two days on, two days off, only half the guys. We were able to still continue to get the work done. Um, so I just really, I think this town board and the town residents need to know that the, um, the highway department men really, you know, really pulled together during this thing. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, and man. you do plan, you. like we're, we've been talking, you're gonna be, yeah. come budget time, he'll have a, a plan. Uh, now, how we're going to buy equipment over the next six to ten years? We we had a plan at one point in time way back when, but it kind of fell off the tracks, and we're going to get back on the tracks, and uh, we'll have a plan. So that's Mike's job to do between now and then. Plus, work on uh, welfare road culvert. Uh, he's got some bad news on that. Uh, What's the bad news on that? The bad news on that is uh, the plant that was doing the, um, I guess, making the. What do, you, what do you call that? Structures. The structures, but you know, making the mold for the structures got hit by lightning. So we're being held up now three to four weeks. Uh, discussion was maybe to reopen the road, but by the time we reopen it, we have to close it again. So they're going to be inconvenienced by maybe two to three weeks because of it. But it is what it is. You know, Mother Nature and God have a better plan than we do sometimes, and uh, they're delaying it for whatever reason. Now, if it happened a couple of days before that, we wouldn't have had to close the road. But once we closed the road, it was too late. They started digging up. We'd have to repatch. It's just not worth the aggravation. So those on Welfare Road, we apologize, but it's beyond our control. Can I ask my question? Yes. Uh, last time you were here, we talked about Guinea Road um, and maybe putting a central line. Uh, yeah, the, um, the striking guys, we, we, they come in uh, in the fall. So okay. We're gonna, you know, we're going to adjust that because the new road, the new road that we're paid. They also have to be striped, so it's you know it's very it's very expensive to have that done. Uh, it's a big part of our maintenance budget, so we can you know we just do it once a year, and we usually do it in the fall when it's uh, cool. Thanks. You know, after the paving season's over. Thank you. So on the resolution on the motion, all in favor on the good steer loader? Aye. 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 Okay. Number five, motion to appoint Tom Frasca chairman at ARB. Um, Mary Larkin, uh, a longtime member of the board, became the chairman a while back. Um, she is moving on to uh, a new portion of her life, like I'm going to do eventually. You guys aren't going to miss me, I know, but we're going to miss her. <laughs> and um, we were going to make a motion tonight to appoint Tom Frasca as the chair, and they will move forward. And we still have uh, one, an application for the position, and we have to look to fill that soon and uh, name him as chair so she can move on. So with that, I make that motion. Second. All discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Okay, next, I'm gonna waive the rules to allow me to consider the, what I discussed earlier about the um, master plan for Route 22. So on the motion to allow it to be put on the agenda this evening. So moved, is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Being unanimous <clears throat> on the motion itself. Authorize town supervisor to negotiate funding a Route 22 master plan zoning update with the town planner at a price not to exceed 19.5. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Did we set the public hearing for the pedaling? For what? Did we do that already? Which one? The pedaling? No, no we, we're going to be doing it now, but we're going to say, what was the date we're saying in August? Does anyone have the meeting for second meeting in August? Hold on. I don't know. Anyone have their calendar? Yeah. Hold on. So second, the 21st and... August, oh, August sorry, the 20th? 20th? Yeah. I like everyone say better. <laughs> I'm okay. looking at Friday instead of Thursday. So we're going to make a motion to set a public hearing for Pet and solicit an article on August 20th. Okay. I'll move it. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, I'll remind you. Okay, next is a motion at the conclusion and, oh, okay. This basically, I'm gonna, we're gonna ask that we do the public comment. We're gonna have town board comment. And then I'm gonna ask to go into an executive session to discuss two quick items. Um, one is definitely possible litigation. And I forgot what the other one was. Probably litigation. So, um, we're gonna go now to the public comment and then I'll ask that we remain for at least five, 10 minutes and the public would not have to say, we will not be making any decisions. Okay, recognition of public. Yes, sir. I wanna thank all that attended tonight. You were all perfect ladies and gentlemen. This is the first time we did it. We almost ran out of space. I wanna thank my assistants, uh, Miss Bell. Thank you for helping me take uh, temperatures. I now know everybody's name. I don't know what you look like, but I know your names. So if I see in public and I don't say hello, you'll know why. And uh, helping set up here tonight. It takes a lot to get this place set up, but we did it and got it accomplished. And the shield is not to protect me from bullets because it's not bulletproof, so. But it worked. We're leaving there, the courts need it, and we just moved things around, and I think it worked out very well. Okay, sir. Uh, evening, I'm Scott Seaman. I'm here today from the uh, Brewster School Board. Uh, I just wanted to follow up because we had our uh, graduation on the same night as a school board meeting, so we weren't able to uh, follow up. We wanted to follow up with uh, Supervisor Hay, Councilman Lark, and the rest of the board. Uh, we appreciate uh, the work they put out on behalf of the town um, and getting the kids graduated. It was you know, a very monumental event. It was a big uh, town, the village, the county, everybody came together, and we do appreciate all the uh, work that went into it. Um, thank everybody for the budget vote. And um, right now we're currently putting together plans for the reopening of the schools. I've been told the um, governor will have information to us in the next week. And then we have to submit plans to the governor's <coughs> office by the end of the month. And that will be approval the first month of December, uh, first month of October, August. And they'll let us know what's going on. So hopefully we'll have more information. And once again, you know, thank you to um, the town for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Any other public comment? <clears throat> Good evening, uh, Matthew DeRose, uh, town, uh, Southeast resident. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember me. Uh, I came to you guys in February with a, a, a complaint about a pipe and uh, property damage. We had just received, now in July, a reply. Um, in the reply, it, the conclusion was that there was an investigation, which there wasn't, that I was aware of, since we inquired to the town about, uh, about this issue. Um, there was no, no engineers that came to my property to assess the situation. No investigation was done by the town of Southeast on my property since February. Um, I don't, I, I, I'm reading this, this, this reply and it's quite insulting because on this sentence, as I quote, 
there are other residents in your community who have reported leaking basements. And I kind of had a feeling that th this was going to be a reply. There's a, there's a lady in my neighborhood who's obviously been complaining to the town about leaking basements. And I've actually had to call the, the, uh, the state troopers on her because she's been trespassing on my property. And she's actually uh, caused other residents in my neighborhood like to be scared. She's, she's, she's obviously a nuisance. But to put her in your reply and to dismiss our claim is absolutely insulting. Now, you say that in, in, in your response to this, this issue, you, was, you, you also say that uh, according to the engineers who have actually, I haven't seen an engineer, and if they did, they came last year and they didn't do anything. So, and that was the prior highway superintendent, okay? And he did nothing either. So now, according to your, 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 uh, your, your uh, results, high groundwater is the issue, okay? Let me tell you where, where, what high groundwater looks like, okay? I'll tell you why there's high groundwater in that area. This pipe right here. This is an 18-inch corrugated pipe. When the, when the town superintendent, the highway superintendent came in, in 2019, they didn't even know that this pipe existed. They didn't even know how the, the plans, where the plans were. You know who found it? I did. I went to the Putnam County Courthouse, right? It took me five minutes to find the survey of, of, of my development, right? And it says on, that, on, on the survey that the, uh, what is it, DEC owns the water, because it's a DEC watershed, right? It's protected water, right? Mm -hmm. This pipe is, also needs to be maintained by the town of Southeast. Okay, now this, this pipe has been neglected for many, many years. I mean, for, for a pipe to do this, I mean, I'm not a rocket scientist, I'm not an engineer, but I could tell you that it takes a long time for steel to, to corrode like this. And you know what happens? How this happens? Salt, uh, you know, contamination, minerals, a lot of things, time. But the other thing that I want to point out in the response is that you, dis you, you, you totally dismiss the fact that this pipe carries a natural spring. This water flows all year round. I, I looked today to make sure on a, on, a, on a dry day in July that it was flowing and it's still flowing. I invite all of you guys to come over on the driest of the days, take, get a cup, stick your hand down in the, in, in the storm drain, which I did myself and calculated over thousands and thousands of gallons flowing through this property every day, okay? So the result was high groundwater. This is why there's high groundwater, okay? Years and years of neglect of the, of the, of the, of the, the, the basic maintenance of the roads. Years and years of neglect, and this is what happens, right? And this pipe sits on the corner of my property. Now my septic fields are maybe 50 feet from there, right? So just on, on the basis, if anybody has a calculator, think about it. 700 gallons a day, 365 days a year. It's a lot of water. So when the, when the response is unusual amount of groundwater, that's the reason. That is the reason, okay? And to put, to put the other neighbors who are actually farther away from me and, 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 and actually, um, you know, plot me into the same Complaint is insulting, and it also, it also tells me that you did not do your homework. Now, let me, let me, let me just show you. They, uh, they did a, uh, we, we, dug, we dug a trench near this, near this storm drain, and this is the amount of water that filled up within an hour. Okay, you, could, you, you, you want to talk about water parks? The other guy had problem getting water. Okay, right, you, you, here's your water, okay? There's, another, there's another, another trench that we dug. Can't see it. Same thing. It, it filled up with six feet of water, okay? That's not high groundwater. That's a failure to maintain 
a storm pipe that, um, quite frankly, the, that the town wasn't, wasn't aware of. Because when they came in, in, in uh, October or whatever, November of 2019, the gentleman said, oh, I, we don't have the plans for this. It's somewhere. That was the answer I got. So you know what I did? I went to the, I went to the courthouse and I found it. <coughs> and my initial, my initial, um, my initial request was to, uh, you know, to, to help with the, with the cost. This cost me over $30,000. I had to take out a pension loan, okay? And I'm, I'm going to pay it now, whatever, over the course of five years, whatever it is. Um, you know, now that's, what, now that's what I have to endure, right? For the town's failure and negligence to maintain this, okay? And now, you know, since I moved in here, I've been, all I've tried to do is the right thing. You know, we, we had flooding when we first moved in, literal flooding, the basement was flooded. So you know, you know what I did? I ripped up the floors, I put, it, I put new floors down, and I said, well, you know what, it was probably a freak thing, rainwater, I know, you know, wet season, whatever it is. That October of 2019, then our septic backed up. Now I have to say, okay, now I gotta rip off the floors again, and now I have to do this all over again, right? Now I got two little kids, at home, okay, and you know, it's it's tough, all right, and uh, you know, and then we we come to you in February, and I understand that COVID happened, but I, listen, I'm a fireman, I work in the city, I work through this whole thing, okay, we can work, okay, I understand that things happen, but it's July, okay, it's July, all right, that, that it's unacceptable. Now, and and the other thing I wanted to ask was, uh, let me see, I got a lot of things to ask. For, this is one, one thing. This pipe, right, it runs just over 350 feet long, okay? This pipe has been a complaint for many, many years, obviously. I, we sent pictures to the town, we sent pictures to the highway showing that this pipe is severed, literally severed in multiple locations, okay? So that tells me right there that what is happening? What is happening through this pipe? This pipe that flows water 365 days a year what happens to, to that water? Where does it go? It goes on to the surrounding properties. It, it, it's, it, you don't need an engineer or evidence or even me to hire a lawyer, which I don't even have the money to do, to, to sit in, court, in, a, in a court and litigate and litigate and then just everything just goes on forever when it's, it's, it's an obvious uh, case of, hey, this is the problem. Can we fix this? But obviously it didn't get a response when my initial concern was to, hey, how about we get some material from the town? Of course, New York state law, you can't accept or can't receive uh, you know, uh, town uh, you know, materials because of whatever reason. But that was my initial concern. Let me, I don't wanna litigate anything. I'm, I'm a, I live in this town, I'm gonna be living in here for another 30 years or whatever the case may be. I don't wanna have any problems with the town. But now you're forcing my hand into something that I'm either gonna be here every town board meeting just asking you when are you gonna fix this pipe because it actually still isn't fixed and you say it's on the docket, but it's still not fixed. So what's still happening? Water is still coming onto people's properties, right? So, so since then, I have paid over $30,000 to fix this, right? Uh, do, uh, the Putnam County Health Department uh, according to their regulations, made us put in a cur curtain drain, right? This curtain drain costs over $10,000, just, just on the gravel alone, okay? Because we needed to mitigate the water off of our property and into the storm drain, basically diverting it around the septic fields because we're trying to do the right thing. I mean, honestly, in, in the whole town, I'm sure there's so many violations all over the town of Southeast that people don't, they just fix their things you know, uh, on their own, and they're dumping their septic, uh, their field uh, liquid effluents right into the, the town water supply, okay? So, you know, I just want to make that aware that, you know, I'm standing here before the town, and, you know, from day one, tried to do the right thing, and all I get is the response where you butt me in, where you, where you, where you, you tag me along with uh, harassing neighbors that, that I, I understand a lot of these things are reported leaking basements. I get it. Like, you guys uh, get comment, com complaints that are, um, 
that are unfounded. But this is, this is obvious, gross negligence, okay? And you could come over right now, we could all go over there right now, and I'll show you the storm drain. When they actually did come, Mike Berta came, they came the next day and they, they, they repaired the pipe, it looks great. But you know what they also forgot? The curb. What happens in, in the winter when the snow and, and, the, and the salt and, the, and, and everything, everything that the guys did is all for nothing. You know what I did? I went out there and I, I had some, they actually left some concrete. I said, listen, leave it there. I, I'm going to patch it up. Whatever you got, don't throw it out. I'll patch it up, make a curb. So now you know what? When the salt comes down, it, maybe it's not going to corrode the pipe again. Okay? So, it, you know, I, I just don't understand why the, this is the response I got. And I also, I, I just, I just want to know why you cannot just file a claim with your insurance company and just take the bullet because this is obviously the town's negligence for what, what has happened to our property. Um, I, I want to know when this pipe is going to be fixed, the actual pipe, and uh, you know, what, you know how, how does the town say that they remediated this, this problem when the damage has been done? Okay, I'm, I'm very angry and I'm sorry that I'm coming to you as, a, as a, you know, infuriated, but you gotta understand that this is not a case of a leaking basement and an unfound, uh, you know, common problem. I know what a leaking basement looks like, okay? My, my basement obviously flooded twice, all right? I know, I know what, what, what's a, a crack in a foundation and what obvious water source is coming in onto my property. Okay, you guys didn't do your homework and now I'm standing here before you asking for your help again. So what is your response? I can answer your question. Okay, thank you. Uh, you, have a, you have an allegation that there was negligence on the part of the town. File a notice of claim. File a notice of claim and then it gets turned over to the town's insurance. But I, I'm telling you now that from our investigation. What investigation? Well, you said there was never an engineer. Our town engineer inspected that. When? He comes every Thursday. I don't know which day. He comes every Thursday. No, nobody, has come, nobody has come onto my property to investigate. Okay. How, how am I not aware? Okay. Listen, obviously this is going in the, in the, in the realm of litigation, so we're not going to discuss that here. So if, you've got, if, you've got a, if you feel you've got a claim against the town, file a notice of claim. You mentioned in your letter that you have your friendly attorney, Jay o, He's a municipal lawyer. He can give you the same advice that I just gave. You know, what he, you know what he told me? He told me to file a claim. And you know what happens after that? Then I have to pay somebody, right? I have to pay somebody to fight, fight well, the, the insurance company. I can't give you money. I understand that. But you, you as There's the no town. determination that our town was negligent, which I don't believe they were. Okay. Because yeah. towns can't be negligent over something they don't know about. Okay. okay. Well, well, actually, you did know about it. No, not. Not, what, did we not respond to it once we were told? Actually, no. Well, was that pipe not fixed? Did, it's obviously not it? fixed. It's still not fixed. Well, that's, again, a difference of opinion because I've okay. discussed it with our pilot. It's actually, it's not an opinion, it's a fact. The it's pipe is not broken. <clears throat> okay. the opinion of the highway department. Okay, so, okay, so I'll, I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll take pictures of the pipe that's broken still and I'll, I'll send them to the board. I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll email. I'll, I'll send them to Mr. Mr. Burr. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send them. I'll, I'll send them. I'll send them. Mike, you know. not to put you on the spot, when's the last time you were out there? Uh, I was out there when, when they were doing the, um, when he was putting the curtain drain in. And I have a picture here on my phone. And Mr. Duros is right. There is a separation in the pipe. So when uh, Gary DeVito opened this pipe up, the, the pipe is in perfect condition at, at Mr. DeRosa's property where they hooked into this, they hooked their curtain drain into our pipe. There's a spot further down. Uh, was that allowable to hook in the first place? If he didn't do it, the previous owner, did they hook in illegally? No, he, he, got, he got a permit to hook into our pipe. Okay. No, so I met, I met with, uh, with Gary DeVito out there when he did that. Okay. And the, the pipe here, uh, by Mr. DeRosa's property is in perfect condition. Down further, there's a spot where the, the top of the pipe is open, which doesn't impact his property. And since I took office, when the original complaint happened uh, at the beginning where the, where the pipe was 
bad by his property, we went and fixed it um, as, as soon as we can. Now, I have a picture of the, of the pipe, but it's only a small section that uh, where they hooked up his curb drain to it. And, you know, even Mr. DeVito said that there's, you know, the pipe was fine. And Mr. DeRose is correct. There's further down, there's a spot in the pipe that the top of the pipe is open. Um, you know, that I'm aware of, but uh, other than the one spot down further, uh, I'm not aware of anything else being bad on that on that piece of pipe. Well, but I will go inspect it with the, the town engineer. Okay, make an appointment with your. Are you around Thursdays? That's the only day it comes. If you're around, we'll go out and look at it. I I just want to express my frustration that you know uh, there's there's claims you know being made about you know leaking basements. And the but unfortunately, sir, that is that was brought up because there's evidence of high groundwater in that area in the neighborhood that you live in. Right. It had nothing to do with anybody in particular. There are there are other incidents where high groundwater has been. The the last board meeting that I was at, uh, you guys mentioned somebody's name that lives in my neighborhood. Was that not was that not on that's camera? Only one of the three people that's on the radar screen. I okay. don't think we ever mentioned a person by name. Yes, you have. I want to hear that. I don't believe we would mention a person by name. You did. Um, it, w it was it was the exact lady. You you had you had actually had a conversation with Mr. Burdick about this same person. Um, it, I don't want to name anybody's name, but what, what there was the date of meeting? I want to go back and listen to it. I I I don't know. I mean, we can go back to February. So. February 3rd, I think. We can go to the meetings uh, from February, February, but yeah, so you, you're telling me to file a claim. I'm telling you that I I can't. I already I already took out money to 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 to, to do the work. I understand that, and if, and if you're right and we're wrong, you're you're going to get reimbursed uh, ultimately. But I can't make a determination. This board can't make a determination when there's a question of fact, question of whether or not the town is indeed negligent under, this, under the, the standards that apply to municipality. And, if, and I'm sure that Mr. Mr. Hogan can advise you on that. I understand, I understand that. Is there, is there anything else besides going the route, because this is my first avenue of, of not going the route of litigating with the town? I mean, well, in, in fact, you're litigating with the insurance company. Not, it's not so much. I understand. You file a notice of claim. That's, that's the way it's done. But, I mean, as an so attorney. If, if, in fact, the town was negligent in some way, shape, or manner, it's going to be our insurance policy that, that steps in. It's I understand. Not, I understand. Not, we, we can't just write a check. I understand that. If, but um, as an attorney, you understand that in New York State, I mean, for me to, to spend money to get the same amount of money back doesn't really make any sense, right? Well, I, I know there are attorneys out there that pay cases on contingency. So I don't know what more I can tell you. Can you find out when, uh, the, uh, when this, this, this pipe... Um, when it was put in? No, I know when it was put in, actually. Um, the new when, one or the old one? The, Okay, so, so the, 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 the section, the basin was repaired. It's only a matter of time when, when now the, 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 the curb caves in because where the property meets the curb hasn't been repaired. Like I said before, they came, they used whatever mortar, they, the hydraulic cement to, 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 to protect the pipe. But I had to, I, I, I was there because, you know, you have to watch people work because materials go to waste all the time they were gonna they were gonna just take up and leave but the hole is still there the hole on the ground where all the road sediment and salt and everything that that leads to this is still there I mean you you guys mentioned uh, other areas Brewster Hill they have they have roads caving in if they maintain the roads this won't happen so, you know, you say you remediated it, but it really, I, I think I remediated putting a, a, a ginormous curtain drain 
If if I if I didn't if I didn't get down, if I didn't get down into this drainage ditch myself, lift the grate myself and get down and look at this, the town engineer, the the the, the old highway super, superintendent wouldn't have found this. Okay? And you know, from day one, you know, my intentions were I understand septic systems fail, but the amount of water that's the amount of water that's that was on my property it's unacceptable. Wait, I thought you said earlier too, and I, again, I'm not going to get into the legalities or whatever because I, I don't personally understand, but I heard you mention something about um, the flowing of the water. It's a spring. The town's not responsible for spring water. So I don't know how it's hooked up. I'll leave it to the experts. We got Mike Burdick will go look again. But if your problem is spring water, I don't know if we're responsible for spring water. But if it's in the if it's in the the town waterway, then you are responsible. I don't know if we are. We are not responsible for an act of uh, a god or Mother Nature. I don't know. I'm not again. I'm not an attorney. Right. But if you have a spring water problem, I don't think that's the town's problem. The but I. Yeah. Again, you have to do what you have to do. I, I feel bad for you. I'm sorry it took as long as it did. And uh, I know I asked Mike to go out there and look. But again, when you mention the word spring water, I do have a concern that that may not be our problem. And you're saying it's running like, say, 24-7, 365. That's not us. That is not the town. So I don't know how it gets hooked up, who's responsible. But Mike, I'll have you look and go with Tom and look again yeah. but if it's spring water it could be a problem so but i'm not an attorney right Sorry. so 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 water coming through the town's pipe entering a storm basin no no wherever if it's, it's from, coming if, it, if it's a storm if it's a basin but if it's spring water that's outside of that basin that could be a problem and that's not us if it's a storm drain right if and it's, which, it goes which, behind it all your properties and i'm not sure how, if, when it's going to be, we got similar problems because, I mean, they're digging up pipes all the time. The difficult problem with properties like your own, we got, you know, four, five, six neighbors, and I'm just not sure how the easement works and whatever, and when it's proposed to be repaired. Our pipes will be repaired exactly when, I don't know, and Mike is going to have to work on the schedule to replace a lot of them. So let him go out there and look. Again, if it's spring water, I question it, but again, let, let the attorneys do what they have to do. Mike will do his part with Tom Fenton again, but again, if it's spring water. You also mentioned something about curbing. Is there some curbing that, that could be done to, uh, to remediate? Well, yeah, if the, you know, that's what we're gonna have to look at. If there's, if there's additional road water that's running off uh, our road on his property and it's not going into the catch basin, then obviously that's a, you know, that's a, uh, you know, highway department concern, we would have to address that. Which I think is what Mr. Doros said. About well, that was a minor, a minor portion of the of the grand scheme of things. Um, Certainly, that is something that the town could do. In the town correct. Area. I agree. That's that. That's perfectly fine. I mean, you know, I, that that like I said, it's the it's the that was that's minor from the the amount of water that was that was coming through this storm basin. I don't I don't know where it's coming from. But it's in the town of Southeast Storm Basin through pipes. There's, there's, and 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 like I said, I have the survey from 1955 when these when these uh, corrugated pipes were were installed, and on the survey, it says you can you can go to uh, the Putnam County Courthouse and and and, and I, I got them recently. Trust me. I so um, on there it says it's the New York City watershed. We're in the Croton Falls, I believe, watershed area. And um, we uh, and, and it says on the survey that the town of Southeast is it has to maintain. We, we all do have the, there's a right of way. I don't know how wide it is because again we're 15 headed. feet. Yeah. Yeah. So and also I wanted to mention that there is also a, a, a septic uh, reimbursement program. Where? F for for the Hudson for all New York. No more. I'm so I'm sorry. You, there used to, the, when I was on the Putnam County Legislature, there was a septic maintenance repair program. This is fairly recent. Now this was discontinued. There's no money in the watershed monies that the county has, but All they right. also gave the EOH 
up in uh, Patterson. Okay. That there's no money for septic repair. I mean, I, I was just looking at the website the other day, and which, they, which one? I'm sorry. Which one? I I, I mean, I it's it's it's. I think it's a fairly new thing, but we're not technically we 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 miss the, you know, we're in one of those gray areas because yes, we are in the Croton Falls watershed, but we're not, uh, you know, our 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 footage is 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 so far away from the actual reservoir, so. But there, my, 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 my reason by saying this is, is that the, um, the, storm, the, storm base, the storm pipe that, that flows behind my property that we had to mitigate our water to stay away from uh, and our septic fields had to be installed by the Putnam County rules and regulations to avoid contamination to, this, to, the, to the water. The, the, uh, the storm drain feeds Peach Lake, which is inside the Croton Falls watershed. Yes. So I thought that maybe that would be a, a loophole to get pro, the, this program money. This, I, I, can, I can look it up, on my, I don't have my phone on me, but it's, it's fairly new, but we just didn't meet the criteria. And you know, and things like that are, are things that I, I, would, I would be open you know, to, if, if there was any way possible to, to, to get some sort of help in that direction, it, it, that's that's the that's the the better route that I would take because I'm trying to do the right thing, and uh, you know we're we're just hitting roadblock after roadblock. I spent thirty thousand dollars to do the right thing, and now I'm going to spend another thirty thousand dollars to litigate this problem, okay. which I don't have the money for, frankly. So, okay. I I, I th thank you for your time. Um, well, we're going to Mike's here this evening. He'll get in touch with Tom Fenton. They will go out there and look. They're going to look into the the drain, the drain, which is our responsibility. Uh, if there's a way to find out about a, an aquifer that's not our responsibility, they'll look at it. And I do believe you could probably file suit on your own without even an attorney. Just file notice of claim against the town. I'm not. I, can't, I better watch what I say because. Right, I understand. I, I, but there's things that you can do that you don't necessarily need an attorney. But we just can't write the check. That's I unfortunate. Understand. Well, no, it's, it's kind of fortunate because <laughs> everybody be here because uh, there's a lot of people with similar problems and it's not really ours. Right. But Mike is here tonight. He'll, he'll come out there. He'll bring Tom Fenton, which is the town engineer, again. I don't know what they looked at the first time. <coughs> if you're home, fine. If not, they'll tell you when they'll be there. Look, and then they'll write you up a report. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry for the delay. <clears throat> Anyone else? Town board. Uh, we have waste pickup or e-waste this week, this yeah. Saturday. <coughs> e-waste drop off on okay. Saturday. E-waste e is this Saturday. We uh, usually when e-waste is to be picked up and there's a holiday on that weekend, like let's say it, uh, the holiday is July 3rd. It was actually July 4th, which was a Saturday. It's the following week. There's two two times a year. Now that we're back on a regular schedule, one's already gone by, there's one more coming up. I think it might be Labor Day where we will not do it that particular weekend. So look at the town website, but it's the first Saturday of every month, except if there's a holiday involved in it. Anyone else? Okay, I'm gonna make a motion to close this portion of the meeting, go into an executive session as soon as we get the camera person out of here. There'll be no, uh, nothing reached by the town board. I just want to make them aware of two quick things. Thank I'll you. Second. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming.